Hello YouTube, it is Chris here, and in today's episode we're going to be discussing my everyday carry for April 2020, so stick with me. Welcome back everybody and thank you for sticking with me. Yep, we're going to be talking about my everyday carry for April 2020. Now, this everyday carry is going to be a little bit different because there's a few things going on in our country right now that have us operating a little bit differently in my day-to-day -day life than I normally am accustomed to. But if you want to see more episodes like this, make sure we get this episode to 5,000 likes, and that's going to let us know through your direct voting that these are the types of episodes you want to keep seeing on the channel. Now, we do have some awesome goodies over there and over there off camera that we're going to be talking about also, but right now, let's dive right in. So first things first, we're going to be talking about what are all my risks, because right now I kind of feel naked without them. So the first one is my watch. This is my G-Shock Range Man. I wore this on my 30 Day Survival Challenge and pretty much every single survival challenge and outdoor adventure you've seen on the channel since then. This has an altimeter, barometer, it's atomic, it has a lot of cool things. But as a redundancy, because it has a compass on here, in case my watch ever breaks or whatever, I want to have an ability to be able to find my way around when I'm out playing in the woods and I get lost in some off of the mountains that you're going to be seeing an adventure on soon. I have this compass from Wazoo Fabiger. It's a really nice kerosene filled compass. I love it to death, but yes, that is my watch. And then right here we have my Woolly Mammoth by Outdoor Element. I love this because I have a ton of jute cordage on my wrist at all times, but it has a massive fire steel. That is freaking amazing. <sighs> okay, that's better. Now, next up is my phone. So this is my iPhone 11 Pro Max. We all have one. Also, it has a redundancy in the fact that it's got a flashlight on it, but in case my battery ever dies, I always carry one on me. So one of the new additions that I've got going on is actually my wallet. This is the Stealth Razor by the Arrow Collective. This is touting to be the world's thinnest wallet, even thinner than a lot of the other ones you've seen on the channel before. And it actually holds true. So this actually has eight cards inside. There's no cash because I'm broke. So right here, I've got some goodies also. Also, this nylon mesh weave right here actually has a really thin metal fiber, which also still makes this wallet RFID blocking. So the goodies I have inside are actually a fishing kit. So if I ever find myself playing out in the woods and I decide that I wanna go fishing, or if I find myself in a survival situation, I have my cards. So these all come from the Grim Workshop or Grim Survival. These are a whole bunch of artificial lures. This is their fish hook card here, and then we've got some line, yes. It's 12 yards of line with a cutter, all the size of a credit card, which is cool. The line comes out of here, and I can use this sort of full fishing rig if I need to in a pinch. So right now, we live in a COVID-19 kind of world, and, uh, well, hand sanitizer is one of those things that I keep on me when I do my supply runs. Now, typically, I only leave the house once or twice a week because we are in a shelter in place order but when i do leave and go on supply runs i have this with me now i will inevitably be run out because this is a very small bottle and i don't have a whole lot of with me so as you guys saw in a previous episode which is my 24 survival hacks everyone should learn i built some custom hand sanitizer this is made from 95 percent grain alcohol and some glycerin I have this, and if you want to see how this was made in about 30 seconds, I have the video up there in the right-hand corner of the screen. Coming back to fire starting, I've got this bad boy. This is just a normal Zippo lighter with my Theorem waterproof case. So I have the ability to have fire at the ready, but with me being a prepper and also being an outdoorsman and adventurous and everything, redundancy and fire you're gonna see a lot of. Another thing that a lot of people in urban environments keep on me, but I keep on me for a different reason, is Burt's Bees beeswax. Now this is a chapstick. Obviously I keep it for chap lips and all those obvious reasons. However, if you get some minor cuts on it, you can use this to seal up a wound. Now I wouldn't use it for like stopping bleeding. Like if you have an ouchie booboo kit or first aid kit, use that. But if you are worried about infections because it's gonna be several hours or even days before you can get up, you can actually utilize this stuff because of the beeswax to cover up the wound and it gives you a temporary barrier to kind of keep out things like bacteria and other things in a pinch. So the first knife up is a new knife to me, but an old knife to the market. This is the Benchmade CLA. This is a side opening auto. It has a lot of pocket lint time. <laughs> it's been in my pocket pretty much nonstop since I got it um, back in January when I was up in the mountains for a survival adventure that we're gonna be airing here shortly. I'm rocking a deep carry pocket clip. It has a 154 cm. I love that multi-layer G10. Very, very, very thin and lightweight, which really complements my other knife from Benchmade that I carry with me. 
Now a new addition to my EDC is this flashlight. This is the Sabre by PowerTac. This is a single AAA battery flashlight, but it also has a secondary body piece that you can add to it to make it a two AAA battery flashlight. And it gives you a little bit longer run times, a little bit higher lumens. This thing's rocking about 239 lumens on high. I like it because it's so small, but they do come with a awesome warranty. And just for my subscribers, if you guys want to take advantage of it, they are offering 40% off all their flashlights. We are living under quarantine, essentially, our stay-at-home owners. 90% of America is. And I actually have this mask. This is the Inversion Neck Gator 2.0 by JMO Threads. And if you are having trouble finding an N95 rated mask, they will have some in stock. Now, I did get to talk to the owner. I'm just going to be transparent with you. They said they're going to have a stock tomorrow which is the 7th of April is the only day they're gonna have these available and they're not sure if when or if they're gonna be able to restock them because the demand has been so high and supply chains have been disrupted. Now, the one thing I love about this mask is the fact that I can actually wash this particular system. All I have to do is take out the filter, let this sit out for seven to 10 days to let it disinfect and let all the viruses die that could be on it if I come into contact with anything and I can rotate out the masks and be able to keep wearing this day to day to day. Said, if you don't have access to this mask, I have some all really great alternatives for you. So if you're looking for that N95 writing, there's another one called the Bioscarf. It is a washable and reusable N95 filter using this thing called G95. You can wear it as a scarf and cover your face just fine. They also have a gator and a face mask option also. Now this last and final option for a mask is if you don't have any of that available and you have something like a shemog or a handkerchief, you can use this. Now this is a mask that was actually promoted by the Surgeon General, as you see by the clips, and we're gonna show you how to make that real quick. So you basically take a handkerchief, no matter where you can get it, this one particular comes from Wazoo Survival Gear, and some hair ties. Now I'm using the hair ties because I want the fact that I want this to wrap around the back of my head. You can use rubber bands if you need to as well. But you basically fold it in quarters lengthwise until it's folded over in four layers thick. Then from there, you kind of fold it over on top of itself into thirds, and you have basically 12 layers thick. Now that will not be necessary necessarily N95 rated, but as a last option emergency just to make sure that you are mitigating some issues and having a lower inoculum when you go out into the elements to do any supply runs or you need to go to the hospital, this is far, far better than nothing. And if it's touted by the Surgeon General, well, heck, if it's a last ditch effort, might as well use it. However, they were just using a singular band to wrap around your ears. And one, my ears kind of fold like butter, so I didn't really like that. So I decided to do this little simple little knot method, which allows me to wrap it around the back of my head and keeps it securely in place no matter what. It's definitely not gonna fall off and I don't have to rely on my floppy ears to get that done. Now, moving forward, we have my necklace. This is my Viking whetstone necklace that I've kind of custom modded myself with my own little inventions from Wazoo Survival Gear. I use this because I always wanted the ability to keep my knife sharp in the field. And then I've got this little organizer right here, which comes from Grim Survival. This is their spool organizer from their keychain line, and it has 20 yards of 80 pound test fishing line that I've got ready to line there. And then I have another little ferro rod added to it. Now, you guys saw this in my last EDC video. This is my Benchmade bailout. I love this also because it's very thin and lightweight. It is rocking CPM3V which is touted as a super steel. However, when the knife steel is this freaking thin, I really don't know how much the super steel is really gonna come into play. However, I've only had to sharpen it once since I've owned it. If you don't like to spend $100 on the knives, I'm there with you, I get you 100%. We have some alternatives that I like to carry on the budget realm. This one comes from Cold Steel. This is the Fin Wolf. This is one of my favorites. This one comes in orange, but they have it like in red, blue. I mean, whatever your flavor is, they got you covered. I like this because it's rocking Aus 8 steel. This is a really good budget knife. It's like $30. Now, if you want to go thin, small, and lightweight, my recommendation is a Skeletool KB by Leatherman. It uses the same steel they use on their larger multi-tools, but if you just want a dedicated knife or a backup knife, if you're carrying something like a multi-tool, you're covered and good to go. So right here, we're going to be talking about my multi-tool, and you're like, whoa, Chris, is that a thing? Yes, this is actually a multi-tool. This actually comes in two parts right here, just like so. This is the two pieces that come together. This is actually the Toller Tools Union. I think I am the first Uber to actually be able to touch this on camera. We brought this up into the mountains with us. We brought this for traveling from everyday carry, but sadly those videos got postponed due to the COVID-19. This is probably the coolest freaking multi-tool I've ever used in my entire life. It gives me a lot of cool options because this can separate. But for me, I can carry just this half because they have pocket clips on either side. So with this being the half that I actually carry 90% of the time, this has a very large knife on it with a liner lock. It is nice and sharp, really good pointed edge. It's a little dirty because I had it up in the mountains. I haven't cleaned it since then. I feel kind of bad. And then we have the plier set right here, which is ingenious. You fold it to the handle. You still get those spring-loaded handle. So right here in that little slot, we've got 
three different tools. We have a more of a woodworking saw. We have a metal or plastic pipe cutting saw. And we have a small file with an awl. The only thing that would make this multi-tool system a little more complete for me would be the fact that I could actually have some scissors. Honestly, that is the only thing missing from this particular system because you get two wrenches in one system. You get the socket set where this little bit right here will actually come out and connect. You can wrench it down anywhere you want to. You can actually fold this thing out and get a ton of leverage on the wrench. It's really, really cool. If you haven't seen the videos, I'll link you down to their channel, which is up here or down in the video description. We can check more about the Toller Tool. So with the world that we're living in, like I said, this is another item that comes with me. Actually, this is another item that comes with me too. This is our, my nitro glove. I usually keep them in a bag. I have two pairs because if I have to run to multiple stores, I want to be able to swap gloves out at the ready. I also keep this little tiny to-go thing on ice saw so I can spray down the doors of my car. I can spray that on the insides and I kind of just wait for 30 seconds and then I can wipe it down and then I'm good to go. So in addition to that, we have my pocket organizer. This is a brand new one to my channel. It's called Pocket Pro. This is the Singularity. I just have two keys in there right now because my gym is closed. I can't ride my scooter out and about. It's been kind of boring being on this um, shelter in place order. So I have my mail key and my house key, but then I have this other redundancy of a knife. This is that SOG keychain knife in black on black. And then if I need to charge up my phone on the go because it starts dying from battery, I've got this in charge charger, which is really awesome. They have it for USB-C, micro USB. They got a ton of options out there. And then last but certainly not least is my EDC fire kit. Now, this is something that I carry out in the woods more often than I keep on me in my EDC, but I do actually carry this stuff on me a lot because a lot of my job requires me to be out into the woods. So when I'm out traveling, I'm up in the mountains, I have stuff like this on me before I have my big, huge kit. This is the Fiberlight fire starter. This is has a emergency whistle on it. There's a scrape underneath, has a little tiny fire steel. It is super freaking cool, but it also has the fiber light right here. And this is probably some of my favorite fire tender, given the fact that it is just ready to go. I just pinch it, strike it, and it's good to go. And you're gonna have a fire. It'll last anywhere between two to four minutes. In addition to this, there is something else that I wanna try out because it would let me replace this, this, and this all in one for when I go out into the woods, which would be this little fire kit from Old Growth Artisans. Now I kind of built this myself, but the canister came from them. So right here is the kit that I had. I had six of the stormproof matches. This is called their Fierce Fire, which is this crazy tenderous torch stuff that is like wax infused and has a bunch of like essential oils, I think on it that are banks are very flammable. Made in Idaho in the USA. This is their bigger version of it, but I have it obviously small down in that little storage container. And then this right here looks like it might be fatwood, but it's actually not. It's called the Tender Torch, which is also something that are kind of famous for. It also comes with a fire steel kit, and it comes with a really, really nice scraper. Well, that just about is it for this episode. If you want to wish me a happy birthday and get us to 5,000 likes, throw this video a big thumbs up, and let us know through your direct voting these type of episodes you want to see. But with that said, this just about does it, and see you in the next one.